her in uh, 1994. My mother and I were hit by a drunk driver on Baltimore Road in Mount Zion. I suffered some pretty severe facial lacerations and she endured a pretty nasty hip injury that still affects her sometimes today. Then in 2000, my best friend was killed on Lost Bridge by a drunk driver who was also reading a road map. So he was not only impaired, but he was also distracted. Uh, they know that because after um, the obituaries and the reenactments, both the impaired and distracted driver, as well as my, my best friend, were killed on impact or nearly uh, thereafter. And they found him plastered to the steering wheel with a road map stretched across his dashboard and alcohol in his system. Uh, the other accident that I was in in 2002 where I was T-boned by a drunk driver, she was so intoxicated she got out of the car, attempted to leave the scene, passed out on the sidewalk. Then when the police officer arrived to the scene and asked her to stand up, she looked the police officer dead in the eye and asked him not to call the police. I was fortunate enough, although I was told that the pieces that were left of my pelvis had crumbled too extensively to be pinned and plated back together, that I probably wouldn't walk again and that if I did walk again, it would be with the use of assistive devices such as hand crutches. Well, you see, I defy those odds, but I got lucky and I was also very, very blessed. Um, by the grace of God and, and some amazing physical therapists, you know, to be able to walk again. I am very slow to trust other people driving. Generally, I drive myself. If someone else is driving me, there's a medical reason for it. And that person knows better than to even glance at their phone. Hand it to me and I will look for you, you know. My life is on the line here and I'm so sorry, but your text isn't worth my life.